At five o'clock, I try to wake up from my bed. I'm tired, but I'm going through. I'm fine, I know that you're So, welcome back to Fearless Literacy. Um, if you're coming from my YouTube channel, welcome to the blog. And if you're coming from my blog, welcome to the YouTube channel. Today I have a fairly huge book haul for you guys. Um, I know I mentioned I wasn't going to buy any books. I was only going to buy one every time I finished three. But I went a little crazy. And yeah. So I have a, a lot of books to show you. Um, the first ones I'm going to show you are actually on my Kindle. I have a Kindle Fire HDX. And I do read on this. I don't like to read on this as much as I like to read physical books, but I usually use this mostly for audiobooks. So I have two audiobooks to show you. But the first thing I'm going to show you are all of the books that I've gotten on here. So the first one I got is actually. Where is it? Where's the cover? The first one I got is Fireworks Over Suburbia by Jay Meridu, and if you know, Jay Meridu is actually a YouTuber, um, he does vlogs, and this is actually a book of short stories that he posts, that he published, and it's like little short stories, and I'm currently on the first one, I just started, it's called The Green Fireworks. Okay, and the next one I bought was, was Free Four, which is a Divergent novella by Veronica Roth, and it's basically fours perspective. It's written in Forrest's perspective and it's his how like oh that's really high. I need to lower that on myself. Okay. It's like his perspective of the knife throwing scene with him and Tris when he was throwing the knives at her is Starters by Lissa Price. This one is like exactly. after a war everything in the United States is like split. There's the younger people who are called Starters and they're young, they're poor, they mostly live on the streets. And then there's people called Enders, who are older people who control all the money, they control the government, whatever. And what and what you can do as a starter is you can rent your body to older people who want to be young again. And it's basically about this girl who chooses to rent out her body to an Ender. And it said something in like the description about someone wanting to kill people, and I was like, what? It seemed really intriguing, but... So far, I'm not super into it. I'm trying to get there. So those are all the books that I bought on my Kindle. And then I have two audiobooks. I have Delirium by Lauren Oliver, which I did finish. And Delirium is about a future dystopian society where love has been, con love is considered illegal. Love is considered a disease. And they put you through like a surgery and a, basically to get love taken out of you and you're raised to be scared of love and to not want love and all that stuff and so it follows Lena our main character who is so excited for her surgery until she meets a boy so I have a full review on my blog so I will be so you can check that out I will link it in the down bar and the next one I got was Insurgent by Veronica Roth which I'm not really gonna give much of a summary of because it's the sequel to Divergent, so it basically picks off, picks up literally the next word of after where Divergent ended. So like right there, literally like there's no time in between, it's literally direct right there. So. Okay, so the next, all the rest are physical books that I'm going to show you. I'm going to try to, I will link like all of their Goodreads pages in the down bar so I don't have to like go super in depth, but I will tell you what was written on the back. Um, the first thing, first one I got, which I need to, I want to start reading more of. Um, I stopped reading it in February, but I want to read more of it. It's Demi Lovato, Staying Strong 365 Days a Year. And basically it's every day she gives you a little writing passage to like read and then a challenge. So it kind of gives you a different thing to think about every single day. And I'm obsessed with this. I got this at Target and I don't remember how much it cost. And then all the rest, except with the exception of one, I got discounted on Amazon. Okay, so here we go. Fasten your seatbelts. The first one I got is Sprout by Dale Peck. And so it says, Sprout Bradford has a secret, but it's not what you think. He'll tell you he's gay. He'll tell you about his dad's drinking and his mother's death. death. The green fingerprints everywhere tell you when he last dyed his hair. No one is prepared, but no one is prepared to talk about what happens in Sprout's every... When Sprout's very personal choices have a profound effect on the lives around him. 
so I don't know it's kind of like I felt like this was like a little bit like middle grade and like I don't know it seemed really interesting to me and I wanted to read a one-off book I got a bunch of like one-off books just because like I, th I need to take like I felt the need to like take a step back a little bit from different series and try something different so the next one I got is Dare Me by Eric Devine and it says pride comes before the fall unless you choose to take the leap the formula is simple complete 10 dares in 10 months to achieve greatness Ben Candido and his friend Ricky friends Ricky and John are convinced that now senior year is the time and this is, is the time and this is the way to do it but simple turns into complicated when their video goes viral beyond the walls of the school and a mysterious source who funds the dares makes increasingly dangerous demands broken bones Kevlar vests of electrical impulses it is all more it is all more than Ben can physically take and while Ben may make his mark on infamy will it come at the cost of the rest of his life and this seemed really relevant because like um, I've gotten really into like male youtubers like I started watching a lot of like O2L and like all of their channels so like it started making me think like it's kind of like how these guys start a YouTube channel and they start doing these dares and how far will they go to make money and be famous you know and the next one I got, this is an old library book, it's called Cracked, and there's no description. Well, Cracked by K.M. Walton. I keep hearing things. Oh, that's my neighbor. Um, it's basically about a boy who is bullied his entire life and he tries to kill himself. And ends up having to go to like a treatment facility and shares a room with the boy who bullied him his entire life. Who, I guess, tried to kill somebody? Or tried to kill... Yeah, he tried to kill his grandfather. So, this looks really so interesting. This one is called Exposed by Kimberly Marcus. And all it says is, I'm the firefighter putting out any tiny rumors before they have time to grow and spread. But whenever Kate sees me, she proceeds to the nearest exit like I'm the fire. And I don't know what this is about, but it's to Amelie. Happy reading. Heart, Mommy and Daddy, 2011. Shout out to Amelie for giving me her book. I don't know who that is, so so selling her book on Amazon, how the fuck dare you sell a present? But, and it's all written out in verse, because I'm really into that, and I figured it's a nice, like, quick read, whatever, um, and it'll be really interesting, and yeah, so I will let you all know how these are, obviously. Next one, this one I actually just got today, it just came in the mail, it's Dash and Lily's Book of Dares by Rachel Kahn and David Leviath, or Levathon, and this is essentially, like, um... The other book by Rachel Kahn and David Levithon, it's Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist. But this one is about, basically, Lily is a girl and she puts a red notebook full of dares in a bookstore. And she's just waiting for the right guy to come along to complete the dares. And we're going to find out if Dash is the right boy. The next one is The Vast Fields of the Ordinary by Nick Bird. And it says, it's Dave's last summer at home at home in a suburban wasteland <clears throat> and things are pretty hopeless he has a crappy job a boyfriend who treats him like dirt and his parents ma marriage is falling apart so when Dade meets the mysterious Alex Kincaid Dade feel I hate the word date I don't want to say that anymore Dade feels as if he's finally experiencing true happiness but real love has consequences and its power s soon sets in sets in motion a tragic train of events that will change life's Dade's life forever Fun fact, I have a public speaking issue, and I can't read and speak it at the same time. I have to, like, memorize it first, and I didn't memorize these. But this looked really interesting. Um, it seemed, like, quick, just an interesting read. All of the, all of the, um, whatever's, like, what are they called? Like, blurbs, I guess. Um, all of the reviews were really good. I've gotten this recommended to me a few times. And, yeah, this is also from a library. It's from the... Hartford County Public Library. The last library one was from Jefferson County in Colorado. And the next one I got is called Ash, and it's by Melinda Lowe. And it says, Not the fairy tale you remember. And essentially, it is a retelling of Cinderella. And basically, it's, yeah, it's a retelling of Cinderella. And Cinderella, her, obviously, the stepmother and all of that, she finds comfort in reading old fairy tales that her mother used to tell her. But one day, her name is Ash instead of Cinderella, like Cinder, Ash, duh, get it. She meets this girl named Kesa, who is like the king's royal huntress. Um, or no, the first person she meets is a dark fairy named Sedane. And 
Sedane wants her. And Sedane wants to keep her for himself. But then she meets the royal huntress, Kesa, and it says she must make the choice between fairy tale dreams and true love. You know, and it says it reawakens her capacity for love and her desire to live. So that sounded really interesting, like a darker twist on Cinderella. I'm really into fairy tale retellings, fun fact. Um, I'm almost done, guys. The next one I got was Neil Schusterman's Unwind. I have been wanting this. This has been on my fucking Amazon wish list for months. I'm so excited that I finally got it. I cannot wait to read it. And it basically says, the Second Civil War is fought over reproductive reproductive rights. The chilling, the chilling resolution, life is inviolable from the moment of conception till the age 13. Between the ages of 13 and 18, however, the parents can have their child unwound, whereby all of the child's organs are donated and transplanted into different donors. So life doesn't technically end. And then it follows three different people. It says, Connor is too difficult for his parents to control. Risa, a ward of the state is not talented enough to be kept alive, and Lev is a tithe, a child conceived and raised to be unwound. Because, like, their parents are religious and they give 10% of everything to the church, so they give 10% of their children as well. So their 10th child. Um, together they may have a chance to escape, escape and survive. This sounds amazing, and I cannot wait to read it. The next one, this is actually the, f the first one that I got in my big book buying craziness. Um, you know, whatever. It's The Unthinkable Thoughts of Jacob Green by Joshua Braff, who is Zach Braff from uh, Scrubs. I forgot the word. Scrubs and Garden State, his brother. And it says, Jacob doesn't mean to disappoint his father, but he can't help thinking the most unthinkable and very funny thoughts about public school humiliation, Hebrew school disinclination, and in-home sex education with the live-in nanny. If only his mother hadn't started going to college at 36 and fallen for her psychology professor. <laughs> if only he were more like his rebellious older brother, <laughs> suspended for drawing the rabbi in a threesome with a lobster and a pig, get it, because they're unkosher. <laughs> if only Jacob could confront his overbearing father and tell him he doesn't want to sing in the synagogue and attend S classes and write the perfect thank you note or even live in the same house with him, but of course he can't. That would be unthinkable. And this was actually recommended by John Green, his video, The 15 Best Books You've Probably Never Heard Of, and he said it was worth the price of admission for um, Jacob's Bar Mitzvah Thank You Notes, and I'm so excited to read this. And then the last one, the only one that I've actually already started, other than the Demi Lovato one, is This Star Won't Go Out by Esther Earle. As many of you know, I would consider myself a nerd fighter. And Esther Earle is, like, the epitome of a nerd fighter. She kind of, I guess she kind of, mostly, really, not I guess, I know she did, inspired the Fault in Our Stars book. It's not about her, but she didn't. But John Green explains it in the foreword, and he says, like, um, in the introduction, he says, As I've said many times that while the Fault in Our Stars is... That The Fault in Our Stars, while is it is dedicated to Esther, it is not about her. When the book was published, a lot of reporters asked me to talk about Esther, and they wanted to know if my book was based on a true story, blah, 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 blah. Esther inspired the story in the sense that my anger after her death pushed me to write constantly. She helped me <clears throat> push me to write constantly. She helped me to imagine teenagers in a more empathetic way than I'd give them credit for, or as more empathetic than I'd give them, given them credit for. Wow, read, Kelsey, learn. <laughs> and her charm and snark inspired the novel, inspired the novel too. But the character of Hazel is very different from Esther, and Hazel's story is not Esther's. Esther's story belonged to her. And that's my favorite part of that whole line where it says, Esther's story belonged to her. And that should really put an end to the whole, oh, The Fault in Our Stars, that's about Esther, right? No. Esther's story is this. This, and it's journal entries, and letters that she wrote, and pictures that she drew, and I'm in love with it, and I'm so excited to finish it, to read more of it. I'm only about 67 pages into it because I just started reading it, like, yesterday. But, or I picked it up and read, like, the begin, like the introduction the day I bought it because I was sitting in Starbucks and I was bored and I just bought a book because I didn't have a book with me. Yeah, so I bought this, and I already recommend this to everybody. <laughs> Okay, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I'm sorry it's been such an insanely long video.
But if you have bought any new books recently, comment down below and let me know. If you have a Goodreads, ac Goodreads account, follow mine. If you want to read my blog, read my blog. It's right... It's, oh, I'm hiccuping. It's written in the down bar. Thank you guys so much. much. Have an awesome day. And, yeah. I love you guys all. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. I put out new videos every Thursday. Who says that? Subscribe. I put out new videos every Thursday. I don't know. Someone says that. Okay, so be sure to subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos every Thursday. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Have a good day. Bye, guys.